Hi everyone. Thank you for joining Parkinson Voice Project for today's online Speak Out Home Practice session. My name is Samantha Allendary. I'm a speech language pathologist and the founder of Parkinson Voice Project. I'm here to help you establish and maintain a consistent Speak Out Home Practice routine. Hopefully all of you are working with a Speak Out provider in your area and then I am here to help you keep your daily Speak Out practice interesting. Before we get started, I do want to remind you that tomorrow is our Learn About Parkinson's webinar. This is a crucial part of the Speak Out Therapy program. So if you have not attended the webinar or if it's been over a year since you attended the webinar, then I want you to go to our website and register for it. Elizabeth will go ahead and post a link for it, but you can also find it on the home page at Parkinson Voice project.org. In fact, I not only want you to attend, I want you to encourage your family and your close friends to attend the webinar. It, it is so important. All right, for today's topic, it is birds. Everybody say birds with intent. Ready? Birds. We are speaking out. Let's take a sip of water with intent. I am sipping on warm water. You do not need to do that. Any water will be good. And warm water just feels better for me. We're always going to think about it when we're swallowing and swallow with intent. The first speak out exercise is the warm up. I want you to lift your voice and speak out. Project your voice across your room. Ready? May, me, my, mo, moo. We're lifting the voice. It's flying forward. Let's do it again. May, me, my, mo, moo. Try to connect the sounds. We don't want them to be separate, so we don't want you to say, may, me. We want you to go, may, me, with lots of intent. Ready? May, me, my, mo, mo. Every syllable with intent. Let's do it again. May, me, my, mo. We're going to do it one last time. Let's speak out. Ready? May, me, my, mo, moo. Very good. Go ahead and take a sip of water. Are you a bird lover? If you are, you can upload your photos into the chat. I am going to show you a photo later that my husband took of a Pelegrin falcon, a baby Pelegrin falcon. So I'll show that to you. So if you have some neat bird photos, just go ahead and post them in the chat. And you know what? If you're not ready to do that today, don't worry. You can post them all week. We would love to see your photos. Let's move on to speak out exercise number two the ahs. I want you to deliberately open your mouth wide and project that ah forward. Ready? Ah. We hold it for about 10 seconds. Keep the sound consistent. Don't let it trail off at the end. Let's do it again. Uh, if you can't hold it that long, please don't worry about that. We always say strength over length. I would much rather have a four second awe uh, that was nice and strong and consistent then have you try to hold it out longer and start squeezing that sound um, out. We never want to do that. Let's do another ah. 
Ah. Do you feel the ah going in front of you? Are you speaking out? Let's do it again. Ah. We're not yelling. We're projecting our voices forward. It should never hurt to do these exercises. And if your voice doesn't sound clear, if it sounds kind of gravelly, try to speak out a little bit more and see if it'll clear up. If it doesn't, I want you to talk to your speak out provider. Let's do one more ah. Uh. Good job. We're done with the warm-ups and the ahs. Let's all pick up our cups or glasses and take a sip of water with intent. All right, we're moving on to speak out exercise number three, the glides. This one, I guess, is the, for many people can be very challenging. The thing about the glides is you've got to be confident. You cannot be shy when you do these. I want you to project out a steady ah first. So steady ah so you can hear it, and then start gliding. Try to get as many little notes in there as you can. Here we go. Ah. Uh, stop. Ah. Uh, let's do it again. Uh, stop all the way. Uh, good job. Let's do it again. Now on the way down, I noticed that I have to be intentional about keeping my mouth open. Okay, I don't want you to focus too much on that, but what I find is when I'm going down in pitch, I tend to drop my head and close my mouth. So I just need to stay confident and keep speaking out on the way down and when I'm going up. Let's do another one. Uh, uh, think of a roller coaster or a slide on the way down as you're going down it kind of accelerates and goes out let's start high and go down ready uh, let's do another one like that. Start high. Uh, and now from the very beginning, this is our last one, so let's make it our best. Ready? Uh, get a sip of water. By the way, did you notice the beautiful Parkinson's tulips behind me? This painting was given to us as a gift by Alan from Rio Vista, California. We just love those Parkinson's tulips. Did you know that the red tulip with white tips is the international symbol for Parkinson's? We're moving on to speak out exercise number four, the counting. 
we are going to, just like we lifted for the may, me, my, mo, mo, may, me, we're going to lift and project our voices forward with the counting. So it'll be one, two, stop at the end of each line. Ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Every number with intent. Make sure to connect them. Let's do it again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Now, if you tend to rush your speech, a lot of times people want to say, slow down. I do not want you to slow down. I only want you to think about speaking out. So if you tend to rush your speech, I want you to stretch the vowels out just a little bit more and you'll slow down. Let's try it together. Let's do the counting again and really stretch out the vowels. Really concentrate. Ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. It is very important that you always keep the focus on speaking out. So if your voice is gravelly, you're going to speak out more. If you're talking too fast, you're going to be more deliberate when you're talking. That is the best way to treat the speech issues related to Parkinson's. Let's take a sip of water with intent and we will move on to the reading. Today's topic is birds. For the reading exercise in the Speak Out Therapy program, we are building strength and endurance. Think about it. When you say, when you say, ah, okay, or do your glide, your mouth is wide open, right? You're not really moving your articulators. Well, now when we do the reading, we are going to be coordinating the respiratory muscles, the phonatory or the vocal folds, and the articulators, getting all the muscles to work in sync, okay, to be in sync, and we're building strength and endurance. I've highlighted some of the, the, some of the words, usually at the end of the sentences, and I want you to stretch out those. I want you to use a lot of intent. The reason we highlight them is that it forces you to think about it more. Let's read each sentence twice, ready? There are thousands of bird species. Now lift your voice and speak out. Read it again. There are thousands of bird species. Next. Owls, hawks, and eagles are large birds. When you're talking, let me go full screen for a minute. When you are speaking in conversation from now on, you need to lift your voice, no matter what you're saying, you're lifting and speaking out. So it's, hi, honey, are the kids coming over? Let's go to the grocery store. So you're always lifting. So I want you to do this when you're doing the reading. And when you do the reading, it's a lot more intent than you would even talk in conversation because we're trying to exercise the muscles and build endurance. So let's really try to lift our voices and speak out. Let's read the top sentence again. Owls, hawks, and eagles are large birds. Good. Next one. 
Some colorful birds are cardinals and flamingos. Stretch out that highlighted word. Let's do it again. Some colorful birds are cardinals and flamingos. Next. Chickadees and canaries are small birds. Again. Chickadees and canaries are small birds. Next. The largest living bird is an ostrich. Let's do it again. The largest living bird is an ostrich. Ready? Adult ostriches weigh between 250 and 300 pounds. They can measure up to nine feet tall. Everybody read the last sentence again. Start with they. They can measure up to nine feet tall. Very good. Go ahead and take a sip of water with intent. I want you to name and describe each bird, okay? Maybe just say one sentence about the bird. But look at this cool photo that my husband took of a baby peregrine falcon. Go ahead, um, describe this bird in one sentence. Say something about this bird. Isn't it cute? Okay, next one. Name this bird and say something. Describe something about the bird using just one sentence. Say every single word with intent. We're thinking and speaking out. Next one, name it and describe something about the bird in one sentence with intent. Next one, with intent. Are you speaking out? Are you lifting and projecting your voice forward? Are you using your best voice? Try this one. All right, let's go ahead and do Dr. Boone's words. These are not officially part of the Speak Out protocol, but Daniel R. Boone, world-renowned speech-language pathologist and voice expert, he's the one who first recognized the benefit of speaking with intent. It was in the late 1950s. But he gave us these nonsense words that, that focus on the G's, the K's, and the NG's. Those particular sounds force the back of the tongue, if you say them with intent, they force the back of the tongue up to hit the palate. And that's the same movement that your tongue uses for swallowing. Let's go ahead and say each nonsense word twice. Let's be deliberate and intentional. Ready? Gula gun ga ga. Again. Gula gun ga ga. And the next one. Ku ka man gu ka. Ku ka man gu ka. Two more. Gangla. Speak out. Gangla. And the last one. Ku kla. Ku kla. All right. Take a sip of water if you need it. It's time for our bonus reading. Here's the bell. The bonus reading is more challenging than the other reading. We're not just reading one sentence at a time. We call this running speech. So can you speak out the whole time while you're reading these paragraphs? 
Let's go ahead and read with intent. Really stretch out those highlighted words. Here we go. Birds are vertebrae animals adapted for flight. Many can also run, jump, swim, and dive. Some, like penguins, have lost the ability to fly, but retained their wings. Birds are found worldwide and in all habitats. The largest is the nine foot tall ostrich. The smallest is the two inch long bee hummingbird. Everything about the anatomy of a bird reflects its ability to fly. The wings, for example, are shaped to create a lift. The leading edge is thicker than the back edge and they are covered in feathers that narrow to a point. Airplane wings are modeled after bird wings. You'll notice that we highlighted the last word, the word, any word that came before punctuation. That's a great way to practice using intent at home. Download today's reading material. Take what you learned during this session and practice, practice, practice. Thank you so much for joining me today. I will see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.